we're going to start exploring the client first uh, quick guide. So starting from the classes, which are going to be one of the core pillar elements that you're going to utilize all the time. So as you can see here, overall, uh, we're going to have the strategy for how to identify, use and manage classes inside of Webflow as a platform. So starting from the utility class, a utility class is created for a specific combination of CSS properties, which can be applied to elements across the project. Now, in the client-first cell system, the utility classes uses dashes only. There's going to be instances where we're going to use underscores, but that is going to come in just a moment. So, for example, if a class is set for a specific element, a topographic element, it can be text size large, and you can notice this dashes which are being applied. Same in this other example, background color plot primary. So if we go on Webflow and uh, we have a look uh, at uh, these classes, you can see that uh, all of them are utilizing this uh, dash. So overall, that is going to be the basic for pretty much uh, all of the utility classes which you're going to encounter and also add yourself in client first if you wish. So let's go to the very next part which is going to be the custom classes. Now custom classes as I was about to mention is a custom class created for a specific and identifiable component page grouping of elements or single elements. So these are going to utilize the underscore to define the custom class. So for example, if you have a specific header background, you can utilize a header, which is going to be the main class and then underscore background layer. So this is uh, not going to influence uh, the headers uh, as a whole, so the general class, uh, but it's actually a specific uh, custom class. And uh, as they mentioned over here, it's better for maintaining a project as it's more flexible to changes, avoid uh, overstacking classes and uh, making site-wide mistakes. So this is going to be your bread and butter really when it comes to the classes. And uh, if uh, we have a look uh, down here, and by the way, you can always uh, click on show in docs uh, in order to go to the relevant uh, selection uh, in the client first documentation in order to learn uh, in more detail with more examples also these uh, scenarios and these concepts. So do keep this in mind. Now we need to talk about uh, the global and also the combo classes. So the global class is intended for use across the entire project. So it is a further classification of the purpose of a class. So utility classes and custom classes can be global classes. And a global class can either use the dash or the underscore. So both are going to be possible. And as you can see here, we have the example header, background layer, and uh, FAQ item with uh, the underscore. Now combo classes, uh, this is where it can get tricky. So I want you to pay attention because uh, a combo class is a variant to a base class. So it inherits the styles from the base class and adds more styles on top of it. So for example, in this case, uh, it's inheriting uh, the styles of uh, the bottom class, but on top of that, uh, it's uh, utilizing uh, and adding uh, more styles on top. And the prefix uh, of the combo class uh, is going to be this uh, is uh, and then dash. So, so button is uh, dash brand or header content is uh, dash home. So this is going to be useful for adding uh, additional styles for a specific uh, instance. And uh, over here on the right, uh, we can actually see um, examples and uh, meaningful and complete naming. So they mentioned that 
class names uh, should say what they do. And uh, the name of a class should always answer these uh, two questions. Well, the first one is, what is the purpose of this class in the project? So for example, button is very clear. This is going to be a button. That is the purpose in uh, this project. And uh, how can I give uh, the most context uh, into what uh, this class uh, is responsible for in the project, which again is uh, going to give that uh, context. And if you go one step further with uh, another example, you can see team slider. It's uh, clearly outlining the purpose and uh, headshot uh, is uh, going to give the context uh, uh, as well. So overall, uh, these are going to be good examples of uh, how to operate with uh, uh, classes uh, in uh, Webflow. So again, they also give their own example, give classes meaningful name, testimonial wrapper. This is a good name. I understand it very clearly. And, uh, but an abbreviation like call dash two dash D, what, what does that mean? Maybe call them, but to D it's not really clear or flex mobile IC. Like when you see these classes in Webflow, it can get confusing real fast. So always try to keep uh, the classes uh, naming clean. So overall uh, over here, they also mentioned general to specific class naming convention. So in the example of uh, text size large, we have text. This class is used to style a text element. Size, this class is used to style the size of a text element. And it's quite clear the association and large. This class is used to make the text size large. So this is a very natural progression and it's extremely clear. And if you have a look at this other example, team list, custom class folder name. This is the team list component related to the team page or a team section, which makes sense. Headshot. This class is used for the headshot element in the team list, which again, quite descriptive in its context. And then wrapper, this class is used for the element wrapping the headshot element. So using this naming approach to stay organized and custom classes for the team list component are grouped in the same folder as I mentioned here. So we have this example, team list component, team list headshot image, team list headshot texture layer, team list headshot background. I think that you're seeing where we're going with this. So overall, uh, keep uh, these elements in mind. Uh, it's uh, going to become second nature the more that uh, you're going to work on them uh, and, uh, and apply them in uh, your Webflow project. So don't uh, worry if it's not a uh, hundred percent uh, clear and second nature as you're working on your Webflow projects, because the more the practice, the easier these concepts are going to get. So this is it for the general introduction to classes. Now let's move on with the very next part of the style system client first.